and welcome everybody to the HAS HSEL League welcoming in Australia. My name is Ewan Iatos Reed, and I'm joined by Raymond, Mr. and Christian Havis. Welcome, my friend. How are you, Iatos? I am very good. And what better day to start what is going to be hopefully an 11 week tournament between a bunch of schools across multiple states. Now, today we will be doing the Victorian state. Now, today we've got ourselves two very interesting teams. So, we've got Roxburgh College and the Geelong College up going up against each other in our very first game of this tournament. I'm excited. Are you excited? I am definitely excited. So hopefully we will be getting into um, Champions League soon. But first things first, I do want to talk about, you know, a thank you to the schools, because of course this is, you know, a large event. This is an Australia-wide event crossing multiple states, multiple schools going up against each other. So first of all, and we want to give a huge thanks to the schools and the teachers that are giving these students you know, the opportunity to go in this sort of event. Because a lot of schools, you know, they look at esports and they think to themselves, hmm, is it a real sport? So, you know, it's going to be a huge thank out to these teachers, to these schools, for being just supportive of, their, of the students and what they want to be doing. Absolutely, absolutely. And we know there's a lot of time invested, so that's something that's, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, very much appreciated from both the teachers and the students. Definitely. And of course, as we're getting into Chancellor, like, this is a reminder, that the High School Esports League is a part of Riot Games' League of, uh, High School League of Legends Australian and New Zealand Championship. So, of course, after this 10-week tournament, 11-week tournament, there will be grand finals, and then these teams, you know, they can aim anywhere they want to. So we will be getting into pick and ban, and first things first, we're seeing Yorick taken away. Yorick ban. Okay, looks like it's a target ban against Legend Threat. He has been playing it in solo queue, so this is a very, very strong split push pick and has a very niche in team fighting. So I can see that, you know, that, that ban definitely being a, a satisfying ban. Definitely. And on the other side, the Darius has been taken away. So Geelong College, we've done our research and you were saying to me earlier that Noxus Might, Darius is one of his main champions. Absolutely. This is definitely a target ban on Noxus Might. They want to shut him down, not get him on his comfort and really sort of... <clears throat> Push, push him to the boundaries here. Definitely. And we're seeing the other band taken away. So Brand taken away, which we have to assume is going to be aimed at the support role. And Orn as well. So Geelong College are firing quite a few top lane bands firing at Noxus Might here. They are really, really narrowing that champion pool. They do not want Noxus Might having anything. Indeed. So we'll have to see as... Banning phase is almost over, and it's something that I do want to be asking about, which we can talk about a bit further when we see the pick and bans, is of course, comfort versus strength. Because a lot of teams will say to, to you that, you know, you really want really strong champion picks. You want stuff that is top tier, A tier, S tier easily. But when you look at players like this, you know, in a competition that is, you are definitely trying to win, but you won't have every champion under your repertoire. Do you try and aim for comfort picks, or are you going to be trying to go for what is considered meta? Well, it depends on the player. Generally, comfort is what is ideal for a player. You want to go comfort, set yourself up to perform well, and if the meta doesn't suit you, so be it. Indeed, we'll have to see. But we are seeing the first picks coming through, and Kaiser has snuck through the pick ban phase and his first pick lock picked. First picked for uh, Roxburgh College. You know, honestly, I'm not surprised. Kaiser is that AD carry that everyone wants to play. She is super strong, super... <clears throat> Super, super powerful in the late game and that mid game as soon as she gets that Rage Blade. So definitely a, um, a good pick there. Indeed, but talking about good picks, Ezreal. Now Ezreal, if anyone did do his recall watching MSI and watched Doozy on that double tier build Ezreal, he, I think you can almost say single-handedly took some games there. So this is going to be an Ezreal here. We assume it's going to be the double tier build, tier, tier build as well for Geelong College. Absolutely, double tier, get that scaling. Ezreal's always been known as a two-item AD carry with the new tier build. He's now late game, mid game, every point in the game is just the safest AD carry right now. Indeed, on the other side, we're seeing Echo and Lulu locked in for the other side. So Lulu's more than likely going to go for the support role. And this Echo, is it safe to assume that this is going to be AP mid Echo? Because I've, I've seen some interesting things of Echo. I've seen Echo jungle poking up recently. Echo tank top lane's been trying to reviving. Is this, can we pretty much assume that this is going into the mid lane? I, judging by the picks, yes, but we haven't seen we haven't seen anything for the top lane yet for the side of um, for the side of Roxborough College 
or for the side of um, the Geelong College. So I'm curious to see what they'll, what they'll pull out. I am actually no, that is a, it could be a very well be a top lane uh, top lane volley bear. My mistake. Indeed. So we're seeing Zach and Volley Bear for the other side. So we'd have to assume Zach's going to be the jungle champion. So Volley Bear, by you know process of elimination, is going to be top lane. So I'm going to be really interested to see where this Volley Bear. You know what build he goes for, what you know, what what style he's aiming for. But looking at the picks and bans, we're seeing two roles being focused out. So the Trundle being taken away, surely aimed at jungle, and then Soraka aimed at the other side as well. So trying to pinch down that champion, uh, the, the support pool there. Well, Trundle being banned out is actually a good thing. He does counter two of their champions. Trundle is very obnoxious against the Zac and very, very obnoxious against the Volley Bear, both of which are considered tanks, so he can just steal their stats, but now that's taken away. So we won't have to deal with, deal with him with, in this game. And that, makes, that makes sense. And Jack's taken away as well for the side of Geelong College. So these are both pop slash jungle bans, of course, because both these champions could be played in either of those two roles. They really don't want that split push going on. They're like, not, not having any of that. No split push in this game. And the final ban is going to be Nasus, the big dog in the top lane, not allowed to swing that cane around. I'm a little surprised to see that ban there because you see the Volley Bear, you see the Zac. You have to assume that one of them is going to be top lane. So maybe they've simply done a bit, a bit more scouting and said to themselves, it's not worth the risk, or our top lane just doesn't want to deal with a Darry, uh, a Nasus. We'll have to see as... They look this in. This bot lane is going to be a real pain to get onto. In saying that, it could very well be a Nasus mid. It has been popping up recently. I have seen it come in, even in regions like Korea. It's 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 interesting. So the Nasus the Nasus ban isn't as isn't as obscure as we'd like to think, but uh, it's certainly a bit a uh, bit out there. In and as oh, as for the Ezreal Morgana, it's one of the safest lanes. Oh, Noxus might bringing out a fan favorite, Chogaf. Indeed, Chogaf for that top lane. Chogaf is a real pain to deal from that top lane, and Warwick as well. So we finally see the full roster coming out of Roxburg, and it looks really tough to kill because you try and kill Chogaf, he's not going to die. You try and kill Warwick, he's tanky. Echo has, of course, his ultimate, the Chrono Break, to be able to survive in case he's in a bad position. And then if you try and kill Kaisa, Lulu's there with the Wild Growth. So I just look at Roxburg College, and their champions, in theory, should be really difficult to kill. They are very, they all picked very, very strong laners bar the bot lane. I can see Ezreal having a slight advantage uh, due to his range, but as the game progresses, that Kaiser will be a monster. Indeed, so we'll have to see how that goes. On the other side, we have seen the last champion pick coming in at the mid lane. So that is going to be um, Mishu Mizutufu on his Cassiopeia. So a bit more of a dominant lane because you were saying before that Roxburgh College has, you know, strong lanes in top and mid, but. If we now see it going up against a Cassio Pier, you know, Echo into Cassio, who do you think should be coming out on top in this mid lane? Well, Cassio has the W, and she does have that um, mobility, I guess you could call it negation. So Echo will have a rough time, especially in a melee versus range matchup. We, we, we see this a lot in, in tournaments when we have one laner who just outranges the other and just forces them back into uh, at a tight spot. So it will be interesting seeing what will happen between uh, Cassio and Echo in the mid lane. One thing to note is... Echo has taken Ignite. He's gone, he has gone for that lane. Cassiopeia has taken the barrier. Uh, excuse me, taken the heal. And bad. it is interesting, you know, to see what they do in, turn, in, in that lane. Ezreal also has taken the teleport. This is something we have seen pop up recently at uh, MSI. We did see Uzi take it. We saw Prey taking it. We want, it looks like he's going for that... Um, early back and continue to shove style of Ezreal. Indeed. So that's going to be double TP coming out of the side of Geelong College. So we'll have to see how, you know, they use that because, but there's thing I do want to talk about, because it's something that you don't see a whole lot when you look at, when you come to games is Volley Bear into Cho'Gaff. Now, Cho'Gaff is an annoying sustained tank to deal with, who has quite a bit of kill threat up in that top lane. How do you think Volley Bear, you know, how do you think Danny on this Volley Bear is going to go match up against Noxus Might on his Cho'Gaff? Well, we look at we look at Volley Bear and Cho'Gath, and they're very similar champion-wise. They're both tanky, tanky, tanky sort of um, laners with a lot of sustain. Now, Cho'Gath's sustain comes from last hitting. Volley Bear's sustain comes from his passive when he gets below some percentage of health. So it comes down to how they take their trades. The one thing that uh, Danny has to keep uh, be aware of is the Cho'Gath ultimate. It is deceivingly, it does deceivingly high damage. 
Indeed. So have to be a little careful up there, Danny. Of course, with that volley bear, if he does get into a few bad trades, you know, he should be able to survive with that use of that passive, that massive healing that come, can come through um, once he gets below 30% health. But he just needs to be a little careful up there. Absolutely. Especially in the early, early lane phase. Volley bear's passive shines most, I, I'd say, in fact, is during, during that lane phase when he gets below that 30%. One thing I want to comment on is that the side of the side of Roxborough College has gone for one three one. They've gone double TP. They've gone for a pick jungler. This means they can really get that map pressure out should they get that lead. Indeed, and that's gonna be something we're gonna be looking at, you know, through the rest of this series. Of course, over the next couple of weeks, is teams need to start. You know, they really want to develop a style. They really want to identify themselves. Okay, these are these are what we're good at. This is what we're bad at, and. I think there is no better time to do that than in the first week of a tournament. You knew this is when you can establish dominance. This is where you can establish a reputation uh, as Absolutely. a team that is extremely good at, you know, one, three, one team fighting. The first I'd say two to three weeks is absolutely essential in making a statement and saying, we are a team that you need to fear. You need to respect and you need to scout because we demand that much respect through how we play. And the I, first couple of weeks is essential for these teams. I agree entirely. Absolutely. So I am. To, I'm, okay. I'm curious to um, to see what happens in this tournament since we do have the marksman changes coming out. So all the marksman items have been changed in terms of uh, the crits, in terms of the uh, the zeal items. So I, I, I'm I'm actually looking forward to see how they how they develop out and play in these uh, in, in this tournament. Indeed, we'll have to find out as we are loading ourselves into the very first game of the high school esports league for Victoria down here. We've got Roxburg College spawning in on the left side with Geelong College representing their school on the right now. Encryption, we see the teams. We have a general idea of their style. We've got 1-3-1 coming out of Roxburgh College, while we're seeing a bit more of a team fight, catch, pressure the lanes coming out of Geelong College here. If you had to say which team you think won, came out of drafting and think will be able to get their game online, who, which, team are you, which team would you be poking at? Oh, it's a very, very tough call. Both, team, both lineups are looking really, really good. It now comes down to the individual players, how they play, how they push, how they manipulate their lanes, and how they play around their junglers. The junglers will have a big impact in this game. Indeed, but we'll have to find out as we are loaded out of Champions League into the game. So we were talking before about jungle impact, and I do completely agree with you. And we look at their jungle, we look at the jungle picks. We're seeing surveillance on this Warwick, and we're seeing Raygun on a Zac. So Zac, I think if everyone <laughs> if you've ever played against a Zac, he can gank you from the most unexpected direction. So... I'm mostly going to be interested in the fact that, you know, where are we expecting? Are we expecting, you know, Raygun to focus a lot down bot lane, try get this Ezreal, Yui's Ezreal ahead, or is he going to, you know, focus on getting his other lanes ahead? Like, where do we, where do we expect this Zac to be looking? Dang. I expect Raygun to look towards the mid lane, perhaps the bot lane, to play around because of the nature of the lanes. Ezreal now with the trip double tier build, we can call a hyper carry Kaisa. Also, a hyper carry shut down the Kaisa early you know, set yourself up for, for the mid-game, and all of a sudden, the game is getting a lot easier. Indeed, we'll have to see as where they choose to go, because at the end of the day, we can theorize as much as we'd like. Like At the end of the day, the players are the ones who get to dictate how this game goes. But from the looks of it, neither team really wants to try and do something early. You know, we could see some early level one shenanigans. Admittedly, I was kind of hoping for it. You know, you've got Morgana, you've got the Miasma coming out of the Cassiopeia. You could definitely try and force something, but it seems neither team really wants to risk it. Even... Roxburgh having all five members on the bottom side jungle simply being, in case something goes wrong, we've got everybody here. To be completely honest, I agree with that play. I like seeing this sort of style of play, especially early in the tournament. You don't want it to make any <clears throat> any risks, or make any misplays, in the, especially in the early stages of the tournament. It'll reveal weaknesses for other teams that you might not want to um, reveal at this point, or might not know about. Indeed, of course. That's something we've got to talk about as well. This is week one, and... A lot of these teams, their registration ended barely a week ago. I don't know even that long. So these teams will not have had too long to practice, to not had too much practice, you know, as a coordinated team setting. And of course, communication is, I think, is going to be a huge thing, you know, for for every team in the first couple of weeks of the tournament. How to how players coordinate? Who's your shot caller? And you know, first couple of weeks, like, is that something we really expect to see out of all the teams? You know, this development phase of who the shot caller is and how the team creates their own style. I think like the meta, team style will be developing through these tournaments and we'll see these players grow. 
um, as the tournament progresses. And it's something I'm really excited to see because it's it's always nice seeing seeing younger players grow and develop and become you know a, a great team. And I can see that happening. Looks like there's a small fight in the bot lane here. Indeed, well, a little bit of skirmishing there. Yui has managed to actually use that klepto proc really well. Got themselves the potion of roguedness, and actually, Danny. Oh, this is painful. Level two spike coming out of the choke after the level one of Danny is forced back. Didn't get his passive burn, thankfully, but that's really not good inside of lane control. Danny is in a little bit of pain up there. That was a very, very good all-in. Very, very well timed by uh, by Noxious Smite there against Danny. He waited for the level two, went in and just took a whole lot of health. Fortunately for, for Danny, he didn't burn any sums, didn't burn any, any of his passive. He just can now hold the lane where he is and either hope for jungle help or keep a permanent freeze. Indeed, Chosen of the Storm was not bursted in that particular fight. And you were saying before that the, the passive out of the Volley Bear, the Chosen, is really important because in case he does get low, Cho'Gath isn't level 6, he hasn't got the ability to chomp down, but you just worry that if this is the trend for top lane, if he's going to keep getting bullied up there, it's really not going to look good for Danny. Because when you look at Volibear as a champion, there isn't a whole ton of wave clear that Volibear, you know, has access to. That is correct. At least not until the first back where he gets his Cinder Hulk or excuse me, his Bami Cinder or something like that, something along that of that nature. Ooh, Yui taking quite a bit of damage and the Black Shield is up. Oh, he goes on top of the Tormented Soul and the Exhaust comes down. There's going to be First Blood coming in for the loot. Termas is taking out really low, but I don't think Legend is enough damage. Another Warwick is coming in. Well, this is a 3v1 threat. Legend, you are going nowhere, my good friend, and you are going to get taken out. They leave it for Termas, who picks himself up one as well. And they left the kill for the AD carry. This is something we were, I spoke about earlier. If the Kaisa gets ahead, it will, it will turn to turmoil for the side of... Roxborough College. Indeed, and Roxborough now picking themselves up two kills. They're now two and zero in this game, and that's definitely good in terms of in terms of momentum. It's four minutes into the into your first game of this series, you know, in this entire event, and you've already managed to pick up two kills. And momentum-wise, this is going to feel really good for Roxborough College. Absolutely, absolutely. Getting that early kill on the Kaiser, getting that early kill on the Lulu, in fact, also helps. It allows her to get her second part of the support item. Get those wards out early, develop a... Ooh, Venomous Souls taking quite a bit of damage, but it looks like it was all a bait. Surveillance is here, manages to jump in and fear the Calcio, but doesn't get the correct direction. Surveillance can't afford to go under that turret. Mizu is out of mana, so he can't be throwing those fangs around no more, but Surveillance is super active this game. And as you expect from a Warwick, active in the early game. His late game isn't exactly the best, so he gets his laners ahead in the early game. Ensures they can develop the lead, and he can in the in the uh, in the mid to late game he can take do his job and make picks in the team fights. Indeed, so I have to see. And that was uh, on the side of Geelong College. That trade down the bot lane was just really unfortunate because we were talking about the double tier build that Ezreal really wants to go. The teleport you said earlier was about you know generating lane pressure, being able to harass a bit. And his first back was forced upon him, and he wasn't even able to get the first tier. He picked himself up a sapphire crystal. Another which... thing to oh, another thing to not... note is that they do also have combat advantage on the side of Roxborough College with the heal. No, taking, foregoing the, t, foregoing the heal for the teleport means they haven't got the heal for fights. So it means they do need to get that lead or at least compensate if they get behind. Dean, unfortunately, does not appear to be the case. As we're looking at top lane and Noxus Mai, I mean, we saw early phases, he was doing some horrible things to Danny, and if you look down the lines of the CS, he is just continuing this trend of Danny's just... Danny's not allowed to play top lane right now, he's being bullied by Cho'Gath. It comes down to the kit. Cho'Gath has a much easier push, especially with the... Um, especially with the... Uh, the Vorpal Spikes. Whereas, uh, in terms of wave clear, Volley Bear is a bit lacking, but... He makes up for that in sheer tankiness, especially in those later in those uh, four or five item scenarios. Definitely, and as well as tankiness, of course, Volibear has we can't forget a massive engage. He's you know he's going to charge at you. He's going to take a bite out of you and flip you out of position. And that's something you you know you don't get over choke. Now, sure, you can get the rupture knock up, but Volibear the this the in ability of... for Volibear to misposition one of your carries, especially a low mobility carry like Kaiser. That could definitely put your team, Roxburgh College, in a bit of bad position if Danny get, gets access to that back line. Absolutely. In terms of engage, Volibears is much more reliable. So he might have to sit back and enjoy the lane phase for a little while. But when the team fight comes out, that's when he really shine. Yeah, and unfortunately, the, 
the first jungle uh, main objective has been claimed. The first dragon going over to the side of Roxburgh College, and it is an ocean dragon as well, which, I mean, the, the bot lane is not, it's actually really, really good because they're going to get harassed down by the Tormented Soil. They're going to get harassed down by the Arcane Shot, so they can sustain themselves a little bit better in lane. Not just that, even in the top lane, it synergizes so well with Trogarth that he can constantly just sustain for days. Yeah, it, yeah especially with the Carnivore passive coming out of Trogarth, he gets himself health and mana upon every single minion kill. So it's just like, you harass him down, and then he gets access to a minion wave and he heals himself back up. Exactly right, exactly right. Oh my lord, that is so much I mean, he's only gonna go for the kill, he gets the chomp down! Oh, Chosen of the Storm was not able to save him. And that's what I was talking about earlier. The damage from Cho'Gath's ultimate is deceptively high. Even with even through the even through the volley bear passive, it just he went right through that like it was like it was yesterday's lunch. Oh my lord! And Yui is taking so much damage. Thomas goes in with the kill. Rinsing Yui forced to flash away. The flash coming from Thomas, but it's not enough. There we go. Fresh Pro just picks himself up the kill. You cannot wash that glitter off. So much burnt there from the side of Geelong. Unfortunate because he had to burn his flash and the arcane shift only to die to the uh, to the Lulu. But he had to try something. They are getting harassed down there. Of course, the sustain coming out of the ocean dragon. We don't really talk about it much as casters. You know, you simply are oh, the dragon's been secured. But think about it. After every single fight, whether it goes well or poorly for this bot lane, they can simply back up a little bit, hit the minions a bit more. Of course, they are. Of course, Termes is also running fleet footwork, so he simply, when he does get low, he's like, all right, I'm going to heal myself up with this dragon. I'm going to heal myself up by hitting a couple minions. And we see, whoa, Thunderclaws coming out here, but I don't know if Danny's able to force it. The rupture forces the disengage up in the top lane. Unfortunate, it had such good potential to be a good engage. He had the right idea there going in for that, going in for that fight. Unfortunately, rupture disrupted his ability to continue the fight. Indeed. It's a bit unfortunate, but I like the idea from Danny. He needs to try and do something up in this top lane. He's, you know, 30 CS down on his opposite number of Noxus Might. He needs to try and force something in Raygun as well. We were talking about these junglers being active, but we haven't really seen a whole lot of them. I mean, especially from Raygun, his team is falling behind bit by bit. They're 3k gold now. Their top laner is in a really rough scenario, and he's still just farming up. I think Raygun needs to start getting into this game. He does. He now has his six, so we can look. We can look to see him go in for make some engages. He has an experience lead, in fact, which will actually be useful coming to the later stages of, of the uh, of the team fights. Unfortunately, will it be too late? That's something only time will tell. Indeed, and I think it might be time to find out now as Raygun charges up that elastic slingshot. Threat is being really dangerous and trying to force the fight a little too much. Soul Shackles was not used, but the adopt comes in, the pulls the both under turret, but Termus is just taking the damage. The wild growth is simply too much. Very, very well played there by the bot side of Roxborough College. They 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 saw the gank, they stayed calm, they didn't panic, and managed to cut their way out. Indeed. Really well done from Rock, um, from Geelong College. They didn't die. To, they weren't able to. I, I like the idea from it. Legend did go up a little bit too far forwards. Tried to force it without any sort of safety and gets blown up for it. But I like the idea from Geelong College. They can't just sit back and let Roxbow do what they want. They have to just try and force something, whether it's you know an engage or not. You have to try something. So I'll give them like they need to. They need to do something. And I really like the idea that they were willing to give it a go. Unfortunately, they keep losing the maximum from these from these fights they just keep dying and it isn't it's not like it's it's just it's it's misplay but it could be down to what you're saying before just that communication and the, the, the building up of a shot caller now i'm hoping as the game progresses they uh, they manage to uh develop a, a better synergy indeed and if it's not during the game you know they do have a you know like i said I, I was saying that week one is extremely important in getting a bit of a reputation getting online and mizu not gonna for, not gonna risk going too heavily onto Veminus, but as I was saying, you want to try and do that, but there are some teams that will need time to, you know, learn their members. Their members need to, you know, get along with each other. They need to start talking to each other. And I'm seeing a gank coming in. Raygun not able to land the hook on. And actually, Danny might be in a lot of trouble. Might be overforcing the surveillance is in, but surveillance runs away. And, oh, this, this is not going well for Geelong. Yui walked up there. A little bit of disrespect from him. No minions and just walked up to throw a Q down at Termes, but... I don't think that was the, uh, the best of ideas there, especially with how far behind he is. 
Yeah, and good. Rift Herald as well. Use top lane. This is going to be first turret going on the side of Roxburgh as well. So now bear in mind, turret changes for first goal have been changed. You now get proximity gold if you're there, and less team gold. So this makes Noxus might an even more formidable foe. Exactly, and there's no need to stop the pushing here. I don't know if they're going to go for a full dive, although Surveillance is in a little bit of trouble. Teleport coming in well from Veminus, but the Suppression coming in. Oh, Danny didn't get to go nowhere. Raygun tried to do it a bit of an abduct, but I don't think it's going to be enough. He jumps out and uses the Flash. Raygun loses the slimmest of health. Threat. Oh, no, the Akathian rain. When it rains, it pours. Just amazing macro play from the side of <clears throat> Roxborough College. Just simple. So they're just so synergized playing so well together and i just think that um geelong you know need to take a step back stop looking for those fights now and just farm because when you keep losing the maximum it adds up and generates something to an even bigger lead and unfortunately um that's what's happening at the moment if you look at the gold it's eight thousand gold at 13 minutes uh, that is just not what you want to be seeing if you're on the side of geelong college or supporting them because that much of a lead is disastrous, but we, we agree on that there's a bad scenario, but there is a saving grace. They there do is. have the Ezreal, they do have a Cassiopeia, they have things that scale insanely well, so there is the potential for catch up, but Legend Threat, oh, I think you're in a little bit of threat, my friend, as the Cathian goes in, the Killer Instinct is not yet used, but Termus is up there 1v3, and they are not opting to engage. Is that, is, that's fear, I, that's fear you can almost smell coming in there. Termus now realizes he's in a little bit of trouble, Dash away from you, he comes in, the knock-up as well, the hourglass is not going to save him, but actually Thresh Produce is here to bring in the shields and bring up the health, and Thresh is going to get taken out! What was a 1 versus 3 is turned around? Just mechanically well played there by, 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 by Termes, it's just, he played that really well. Now bear in mind, he has the death stance, first item, instead of going Ginsu's like we've come to see from a lot of players. Um, that just makes him all the more, uh, I guess you could call it tanky, in terms of the damage mitigation and the bleed. Indeed, and while all this is happening, Mizu on this Cassiopeia just hasn't actually been, you know, active in the game, unfortunately. Venomous Souls, admittedly to his opposite number, hasn't done much either, but you know, Roxburgh has been playing around the top, playing around the bottom, and now Mizu's finally getting into the fight, but it looks like he might be in a little long way petrifying gaze, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Surveillance is finally in the back line, but he goes a little bit too far. Raygun trying to hold the front line, but I don't think he's going to be anything of it. Wildgrove coming in from Legend on the sideline, but Raygun is still tanking, surviving under the turret, but I don't think it would be enough. Mizu finally for Legend Threat goes down as well, but Termis, the shutdown onto him, teleport coming in as well. Finally, Daddy's like, wait, my team needs help. Unfortunately, his team is already dead. Danny's like, okay, it is my time to shine. As Noctis Might has picked himself up a double kill and is now fighting in the base. Danny has all his cooldowns up, and Noxus, he might simply be like, okay, Thrust Produce is here, and all in all, couple kills both ways. Not as bad a scenario as you might think. Yes, Roxborough did manage to obtain a lot of kills there, but they all, but keep bear in mind, shutdown gold is now solo, so... Um, uh, Mizu, Mizu Tofu getting the kill on Kaisa was massive. Dead. And that was a five kill shutdown, so that was at least 600 gold there for the side of... for the side of... Um, the Geelong College there, but... Tofu, yes. Unfortunately, I don't know how much it is going to be enough of, because if we look at the side of the gold, they are now 10k gold down. They are 2k worse than what they were previously, and there's still golden out on the map. Their turret is up available, and it's only at 15 minutes. I mean, we can see on the gold chart here, actually, we'll have to look in a little bit, as Regan forced out of his own jungle even. He's not even allowed there. And that's the nature of the game when you fall by far behind on a scaling comp. Unfortunately, in. unfortunately, oh, it's, let's go, oh, Danny. But oh, he's... Danny's in a little bit of trouble. Nox's might is charging into the fight. That is a massive choke up and a massive rupture. And I don't know if it's going to be enough. A jump down and dinner time has been served. Unfortunately, Danny shouldn't have been that far up without the vision. He has no tier, no, no tier one, no tier two. Realistically, he should have been perhaps waiting for the wave to push into him or grouping with his team. Steven, unfortunately, you know, Trying to get a little bit of farm and really well done of Roxborough to punish them being like, no, 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 you're not allowed to get farm, but it looks like I'm giving him a dive on me. Oh, a lovely chrono break by Souls there, deleting Mozu, and now Threat 
is on his own, under his own turret. He's like, wait a second, this is my turret. There's four of them going in. You have Dutch coming in onto the Warwick. Raygun trying to do what he can, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Four members tanking the aggro so, so well. Unfortunately, Thresh Produce does go. Actually, it's a double kill. Finally, the turret Ooh, goes down, but Raygun, oh. I don't think it's going to be enough. Finally taken out, but managed to get two in all of that. That was very well played by Raygun. Raygun had to had to concede something, but he's like, if I'm going down, I'm taking I'm taking at least two of you with me, and that's what he did. Indeed, Thresh Produce and Venom Souls unable to make it out there alive, but well, all that happened while Raygun was doing his absolute damnedest to hold the front. The top lane inhibitor turret has fallen, so that is even more gold now going over to the side of Roxburgh College, sitting at 12k, and Baron isn't even up yet, but I suspect when it does, Roxburgh is just going to rush into 20 minutes. Now, bear in mind, this isn't the end of the world because there is no Baron, there is no Dragon spawning soon. Um, Geelong College can sit back and farm for a little while and look to cap, you know, regain any losses that they've uh, previously obtained. Now, if we look at items, Zach has gone for the Cinder Hulk and then the Locket of the Iron Solari. He hasn't even finished his tier 2 boots yet, but um, most definitely a good idea going for his Ninja Tabi, especially against a Warwick, Kaisa, and Cho'Gath. Indeed. I do want to talk about items a little bit. So, of course, we are suspecting the double tier coming out of Ezreal and the tier coming out of Mosu to be stacking up, but talking about this Zac, you know, a lot of Zacs like to go for a very selfish tanky build with the Spirit Visage and the War Mogs. You know, do you think that Raygun's decision here, especially when his team is this far behind, to go for something to try and keep his teammates alive is the right decision. That's actually, we'll have to come back to that in a little bit. Mozu is walking way too far forward and gets out of position. The Petrifying Gaze lands on nothing, and unfortunately, this looks disastrous for the Geelong College. The turret is doing its damage, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Chronobit coming out of the Venice is not going to be anything out of that. And they are now forced to run for the hills, but the Infinite Jerez takes down the Fallen Angel. Double kill coming in for Terminus. Ooh, that team fight was capitalized greatly on by the side of Roxborough College. They just saw someone walk up and took took the first opportunity they got, that was superb. League of Legends right there. Indeed, Mizu try was almost really, like he was trying to walk up and get a really good petrifying gaze, but Roberg's like, no, 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 your Cassio is walking up, your Cassio dies, and did a fantastic job to get the fight going, and didn't even lose anybody at the end of that, and that's going to be an inhibitor at 19 minutes. Possibly even two, no, it looks like they are back up, they will not go for the second inhibitor. That would have spelled big trouble, especially with Baron spawning in about a minute. In about 30 seconds, excuse me. Indeed, Baron's going to be up in me merely a few seconds. The dragon is up right now, and there is very little doubt that this is a third ocean dragon going in for Roxburgh College. And if their siege, you know, if they're going in and trying to set up around with whipping around Baron was annoying enough to deal with now, they now have all the sustain in the world. That's it. Warwick has infinite duress and infinite sustain now. Indeed, so Warwick, and I think all of the members of Roxburgh College, it's going to be a real pain to deal with. You try and poke him out, and they're like, no, 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 we heal. Another thing and... to note is that the support, Legend Threat hasn't, for the side of uh, Geelong, hasn't actually got a sweeper. Now, we we expect them to have, I, I mean, I'd expect at least, at least at this point for, for, for Legend to um, at least obtain one of those. Simply because there's so much vision in the jungle. If you look at the map, it's just lit up all blue. Indeed, a lot of vision. There is a little bit of vision coming in from Geelong. We're seeing there is a control ward at the Raptor Pit. And both teams are now more than aware that Baron is the next major objective. And Roxburgh need to, you know, they look like they're going to be ready to set up some good vision control. And honestly, they cannot start doing that one through one split push that you were talking about earlier. Well, that's because they've been, I mean, yes, they can. Uh, Roxborough can do that. Go for that one-three-one. They have a double TP. Both TPs are up. Both laners are incredibly fed, and they can just sit back and and just push out. But it looks like they're going to forego Baron for a kick. Well, they're trying to at the very least. But I like the idea. They're saying you cannot have any vision in this drag, this um, top side jungle, and with two sweepers on the side of Roxburgh College, any vision that comes out from the side of Geelong can just get taken away easily and. It looks like they are choosing to go for this second inhibitor that you were mentioning earlier, Encryption, and with that down at 21 minutes, Geelong College, we were saying that they need to sit back and scale, but how much time do they really have left? The clock, the time's running out, to be completely honest, Yatos, and um, rather unfortunate at that. But this is something, this isn't the end of the world. This is something that, that Geelong can 
you know, sit back and watch the VOD review and go, hey, look, this is where we're gonna, this is where we're mistakes. This is what we need to look to improve, and they, they can get, they can gain something from this. This isn't the end of the world. Oh, definitely, and I, I believe. I can't remember who said it, I'm sure many people have said it, that the best way to learn is to suffer defeat. And in this side here, yes, Geelong College, you are down quite significantly, but there is always something you can learn from it. You can look at your macro mistakes, you can look at your individual mistakes and say, okay, well, we can fix this up for our next game. We can focus on this area to improve. And you see Roxburg simply march in a commanding force and the Cavian Rain rains down hell upon Mizu, who does get locked up, but the redemption it's coming in will keep him life and healthy, so... This is our oh, Raygun going all the way in. How many is he able to steal? He's able to steal most of the line. Take it under the inhibitor turret. That is the Chrono Break being forced out. But Mighty Noxus is just not going down. And every member is starting to fall. The turret untouched for now. But I don't think for very long. Surveillance goes down as well. Raygun somehow manages to live. No, a double kill coming in for Termus. And it looks like despite the fight not going disastrously. The minions are still there. The Baron, the minion push is still there. That is one turret down. There is going to be a second turret falling as well. And Geelong, they put up a damn good fight near the end of that game, but unfortunately, too little, too late. That is going to be Roxburgh College taking the win. That was superbly played by Roxburgh College. Absolutely fantastic League of Legends. They they played that map perfectly. They pushed all the objectives. They gained control and didn't even need to do go one three one. Even they could have. They could have at any point pushed the pushed the push their priorities and just choke them, but they didn't, they didn't even need to because they were far enough ahead such that they could take any team fight they wanted and come out ahead. Indeed, the Roxburgh College putting on, you know, we, I was talking earlier today about, you know, teams really want to step up in these first couple of weeks and establish themselves being like, hey, we are a team that you need to respect. We are a team that you need to be worried about facing. And I think Roxburgh College definitely succeeded in that today. Absolutely. I mean, look, even looking at the damage charts, we've, we've got 15,700 damage from the Kaiser alone. Coming in at second, and albeit a far second, is Cho'Gath at almost 13,000 damage. That's huge. Indeed. So that is a... How, okay. How often do you see a Cho'Gath out damage an Echo in, 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 your, in your solo queue games, the Altos? Um... Not very often. I've I've only had a few games of Echo in it, unfortunately. But Echo usually usually pops off. Absolutely. Let's talk. Take a minute and talk about their builds. I, I actually like the build path taken by Termes. I like the, the 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 rush into the um into the death stance to the Ginsus instead of going for that Ginsus. He had the sustain. He prolonged laning phase for as long as he felt necessary, and then just crushed after misplays were made from the side of Geelong. Indeed. So really good, you know, coming out of these builds, of course, but we did talk earlier about, oh, we, I wanted to be able to ask, but unfortunately I couldn't, Reagan's build with this supportive Zach. So again, with the way that the team, the way that the game was going with his team falling behind so early on, do you think that this build was the correct decision to make, or would you have preferred to see something like the buildings of a spirit visit? I agree wholeheartedly with this build. Reagan made the right decision. Support items are lower in gold than tank items. So... He had to forego the, the, the egotistical build and went for the team route. Unfortunately, it didn't pay off, but the idea was right. Indeed. So that is going to be the first round of the Victorian HSEL completed. So unfortunately, that is going to be uh, for John College. They will be starting the season zero, uh, 01, but they have every chance to come back. And remember, this is an 11-week tournament, so there is... So many chances for Geelong College to come back in. And Roxburgh, you've shown a dominant performance in one week, but you need to make sure that you're keeping this up week through week. So we unfortunately, that will be it for the Victorian broadcast. So I would like to th again, thank you very much for everyone for coming down and visiting the schools, for supporting you know, these players coming in. And of course, uh, Mr. Encryption and Yuna for being my fellow caster. And of course, Yuna, the host who has been broadcasting this game now, out to everybody. Uh, feel free to join us again at 7 p.m where we, hold, we will hold our second match of the night. Indeed, the second match of the night will be Western Australia's first ever round, and the teams will be Joseph Banks SC Zuckerberg up against Apple Cross SHS Team B. They will be casted by myself and another caster, so unfortunately, Ray will not be... Unfortunately, Mr. Encryption will not be joining us on that particular bout, but until then, I would like again, thank you very much for everyone coming around, and I hope to see you at 7 o'clock.